Hi guys, I am very very excited uh, because we have a very very special guest this evening who's going to be on the live with us. If you are a parent who has struggled with being bitter to your kids, you are a parent who has struggled on raising your voice, have raised your hand on your child, or if you are someone who's constantly finding it so hard to constantly work around how to make your child listen, right? I think we all struggle with that, especially if you have a teenage or like I almost have one, you will start realizing that it's getting harder and harder to communicate, communicate to your children, right? And that is exactly what we are talking uh, about today. And I think it is a very, very important part. And I have felt this through the lockdown and through this pandemic where we're all cocooned in this one house, which is on how one, do you communicate so your children listen? How do you be a better parent? How do you ensure that what you are trying and how you're communicating is very, very effective for your child? And of course, most important that you're not being the parent you don't want to be because you have the pressures of so many things that you really want. You're just trying to do so much uh, at the same time that there is a time where you will snap, you will feel horrible, you will shout at your kids and you will do all of those things that you don't want to do. But how can you really avoid doing that? So if that is your struggle, then you're absolutely going to love this session um, with me today we're going to have Shubhilas ji. Shubhilas ji thank you so much I was just telling everybody that I don't know how you are always on time you're always radiating you're always so full of energy you're so prompt with your replies like uh, before any everything else I need to learn time management from you. <laughs> thank you Mansi ji for having me here on this beautiful extremely beautiful and amazing platform that you've created right. uh, and I am honored and happy to be sharing whatever I can to make uh, uh, kids top press something better and more valuable to everyone who is here. How do you work with being a better version of yourself because you are actually responsible for raising another life? My understanding of parenting is parenting is very much like uh, surgery. What happens uh, in an operation theatre, closed doors, and it's only a surgeon who knows what has happened inside that closed doors, right? right. Nobody else will ever know. Uh, the patient obviously never knows. Uh, he is like, you know, hardly conscious. Uh, so a parent is very much like a surgeon who is operating in closed doors. And what the parent does with the child, it eventually manifests many, many years later. Uh, in the form of a well-developed personality or a very distorted type of personality, you know. Um, so my understanding is parenting is a lot of responsibility. It's accountability. And you are, you are accountable to no one except God. And nobody else is actually going to measure what you are going to offer the child. So in my understanding, um, when, when a parent is conscious that every word every action and everything that, a, that the, the parent does with the child is actually going to affect the life of the child forever. Right. When that is in the mind, then there is a lot of responsibility that comes in uh, in our actions and there's a lot of gravity that comes in our words. The tendency of human beings is they, uh, there is hardly any gravity in us, especially when we are under pressure. Right. We lose a sense of gravity. We lose a sense of... Uh, you know, uh, control over our words, over our actions. And that's when uh, the child actually observes. It. If I really want to take care of people well, it, it depends on how much I communicate with myself. So parenting is not so much communicating with the child. Parenting is a lot about communicating with yourself. Right. I often tell the story of uh, this lady who was in a mall with a young daughter. And this girl was crying a lot. And uh, this mother, she was like, you know, uh, telling her, Jennifer, relax. And this girl was crying more and more and more. The mother was telling her, Jennifer, don't react, just relax. And the girl was crying even more. So there was an old man who was observing this whole thing and he walked up to the lady and he asked, told her, ma'am, don't you think you're talking a language that is too adult-like? Why don't you talk a more child-friendly language? And the lady looks at him and tells her, tells him, what makes you think I'm talking to her? I'm talking to myself. Jennifer is my name. I'm telling myself, Jennifer, relax. 
so a lot of times we don't have control over how others behave how our child behaves how you know uh, people around us behave but we do have control over how we behave and therefore i said the quality of my communication with the world inside determines my happiness so if you really want to be happy in any kind of relationship not just parenting we have to l- start learning to talk to ourselves right and the more we talk to ourselves the more impactful uh, and the more uh, powerful we can be as parents and as any other uh, uh, relationship that we would like to have with them, is uh, because it's a responsibility we are responsible not just for um, things we do we are also responsible for things we we don't do right we are responsible for things we are not supposed to be doing so this is a, it's a it's a uh, there are two types of responsibilities that parents have there is a primary responsibility there is a secondary responsibility the secondary responsibility of parenting is by is providing uh, education providing food providing shelter providing clothes providing everything that they need basically but the primary responsibility of parenting is providing a good example right if you fail in your primary responsibility of parents of being a parent because what you the way you behave you are also teaching your child to behave right and pa- and children unfortunately catch negative more than the positive they catch it faster than right. the positive right so uh, uh, remember that if you are a parent you are 24 hours under surveillance <laughs> i love that right. two eyes monitoring you 24 hours a day you know no. and no matter what you do they catch it absolutely an ideal scenario where a parent is we, we're all very conscious of these things why are we struggling to put it into action i'm also managing a business i'm also thinking that it's 7 o'clock are my kids eating i'm also thinking my boss is uh, asking me to send this presentation my child is coming in have you done this are you doing this have you taken my print out why are we struggling to be why are we struggling with so much distraction and how do you really give that 100% without being bitter like i don't know how many of how many parents were on this life have you been bitter to your children i am guilty and i and i run a parenting platform but i am guilty and i'm and the only consolation is that i'm work in progress and i'm ready to make that change but how do you be in that moment and not be bitter two things that are running in my mind to share one is uh, the nature of this world is uh, we are in a very bitter environment we are in a very bitter place everyone around us is bitter and uh, the way society is it's it's uh, pushing us towards bitterness the tendency is what we experience we share what we experience we do but we need to have an internal filter where we uh, do not share the negative experiences of life with people we love the tendency is that uh, because people we love are soft targets they don't tell it back you know yeah. the tendency is that we tend to be a lion inside and a lamb outside ideally we should be a lion outside and a lamb inside right so what does it mean to be a lion outside and lamb inside that means for the world you can be as intense as possible as you should be to be successful in any aspect of life but when it comes to people you love intensity doesn't work when it comes to people that you love what really works is love there are some people in this world where you do you do not want to um be intense with there are some people in this world where you should want to be just uh, the perfect loving self you always are unfortunately because we are living in a highly competitive world uh, we tend to become competitive within our within our family also we tend to become bitter within our family also um i i read a very beautiful concept which i wanted to share with you all the this concept says a lot of us as human beings we are at war inside yeah in our heart we are at war and because we are at war inside only negative words come out and bitterness comes out only when you are at peace inside can you act with compassion compassion is not possible unless you are on a platform of peace if you are not internally on a platform of peace it is not possible to be compassionate it is not possible to be loving the problem is we are we are harboring a uh, uh, 
uh, hatred inside we are harboring negative qualities inside and we are expecting compassion outside right if you you know if you have seen these sponges right and if you uh, you drop ink on the sponge you know a lot of ink on the sponge and over a period of time you squeeze that sponge what comes out is ink the problem is that we expect honey to come out when you have invested uh, so much of bitterness in your own heart how can you expect honey to come out and therefore i always say that as parents don't think that you are perfect in and of itself perfection is very far for all of us but do we take time out to sort ourselves out a lot of us are not sorted inside we have messed up inside and we're so badly messed up inside how can we how can that mess inside not come out yeah so i always tell parents please take out time to sort yourself out so when i mean what, what do i mean by sort yourself out so it it really means that every leader the parents are leaders right every leader and every parent has to spend some time off upgrading themselves to become a better version of themselves right and if you do not spend time energy effort in upgrading yourself don't think it'll happen automatically don't think it'll happen or it's not going to happen automatically it's an effort right so if you really want to become a better version of yourself you have to put an effort just like to learn to drive a car you know you have to put an effort to actually sit there and struggle with all the basic things and all that and then eventually become an expert similarly to become a driver of your own life you need to put in some preparation unfortunately we just feel just the fact that we are born we are entitled for a perfect life you know right it never happens like that right two very important questions one is um you know we always say that uh, parents are finding it very hard to get through to children right especially teenage they say she's oh my god i just can't get through and you know the the i think one of the most popular books there is which is um how to talk so your children listen right um uh, how do you achieve that bridge between between a parent and a child that your child actually listens because you know then sometimes the resort is acha usko jo karwana hai na aap ulta bolo to wo kar dega right that, that's that's the other approach that parents take um and you're already telling the child in some form or the other that listen you're not listening to me and i always need to get my way around the other way so how do you talk so that your kids listen before you learn to communicate you should learn to connect wow so if communication is a problem then connection is a problem just like two mobile phones if you want to you know send data from one mobile phone to another you have to pair them right two devices need to be paired before data yeah. get transmitted yeah similarly two human beings have to be connected before communication can happen between them a lot of times we are focusing on communication but we are not focusing on connection so i always tell people that focus on connection and how do you connect by three things learn to see the needs interests and concerns of the other person when you focus on the needs interests and concerns of the other person then connection automatically happens Right. because they focus on your needs interests and concerns the problem is we try to communicate but our focus is on our needs interests and concerns therefore connection doesn't happen and therefore communication doesn't happen but let me give you a real life example here right so you are telling your child do not watch so much of screen and which is the primary concern that parents have right now you've seen it for 3 hours you've been on school for 6 hours you need to stop you don't understand it's not good for your eyes now you you've made that connection you've told them time and again you've explained the perils of it but they don't get it that it's bad for you and how how do you break that communication channel the communication channel is not established with that discussion it happens elsewhere yeah so usually what happens is uh, we become concerned about communication suddenly when we see something going wrong yeah. but the way communication happens and the way connections happen is over a prolonged period of time so usually we come to an emergency and then say are how how do you deal with this emergency emergency is not a time to find solutions yeah 
you will not find your solutions during emergencies you will find your solutions during normal times so usually a uh, parent suddenly become over concerned about communication when uh, there is an emergency situation in the in that relationship right so i always say work a lot on the connection much before the emergency begins right right so when when things are normal and when the child is actually uh, conversing with you there's a, there's actually a flow that is the time you start opening up the hearts see you have to create inroads into the child's heart you know in, in any relationship it works like that right? right the more you create inroads into people's hearts the more you get access to them so and unfortunately a lot of us we don't spend that time energy and effort creating inroads into people's hearts especially small children because what happens is we our, our lives are so busy that we do not have time to create inroads and that's what i'm saying so you need to take out that time and effort to create inroads right and then then during emergencies there's a much easier way to deal with it right you know this reminds me with a, about an interview i did with uh, my favorite tennis player andre agassi and he said a lovely line that has kind of stayed with me rules without relationship is equal to rebellion so it's it's exactly what you're saying the connected communication right